Okay, I've just uh, clicked on the solve for camera one more time after I've um, applied these uh, relations to these points. Uh, you can see that the rectangle has just shortened to these points here. Uh, and I've just removed this point um, from that from that group there, just um, just to keep it to nice sort of even, or, or just to keep it in this nice sort of uh, restricted area here. Uh, now, if you wanted to, you could add more relations to the scene. For example, um, uh, these points are in a line relation, which tells the computer that this is a straight line. This is good for um, working out. Uh, distortion from from uh, focal lengths and uh, from the lens of your camera uh, but if you wanted to you could also tell the uh, the computer that these are at the same uh, point uh, along the y-axis so these are the same distance uh, from the ground plane on the y-axis and uh, likewise you could also do the same for these and if you really wanted to go overboard you could set these two points are the same uh, in the z-axis um, and likewise with these points and these points uh, but it, the more uh, re relations that you add like that um, uh, sometimes uh, the more likely it is to conflict uh, with the regular points that you have uh, mapped in your scene and it can cause a few problems so just uh, just remember to uh, to play through once you add these relations just to make sure um, and again if you uh, do happen to have a tape measure whilst shooting uh, you can enter these uh, these points in um, exactly for example if we go to this uh, relation plane here um, where everything's on at the same value on X. Um, here we have status unknown. Um, if we wanted to, we could go to initialized, which will uh, take the uh, the values that it has currently and uh, and uh, simply sort of uh, work with those values. Or we can say fixed, and uh, I've just averaged the uh, the actual points. Um, distance in the x-axis and came up with a value of uh, 240.80 or 0.8 I should say and uh, so uh, if you happen to measure this uh, this scene whilst you were shooting you would be able to um, to enter these points with a certain degree of confidence uh, but for now I'm just going to leave it at unknown just because um, I'm happy with the way that this uh, this scene has been mapped out now um, with uh, without the coordinates, oh, uh, with the chords unselected or deselected, you can see that around track four we've got this little patch here. Well, track four is the origin. That little patch is actually the uh, the grid that we have to work with. Uh, so, if you wanted to um, perhaps make that a little bit bigger, uh, we could come down to here, and I'll just take the grid step and I'll set that to 10 and you can see that that makes that grid uh, 10 times as large as it was uh, and uh, if we play you can see how that uh, that grid is basically uh, sticking to these tiles here uh, now if we wanted to we could um, further check this um, uh, this tracking by uh, simply adding a primitive uh, so you can come up to here and you can either select a new cube or you can select a specific primitive from here but I'm just going to go with the cube. Now uh, this cube uh, you can see sort of uh, stays in the right space. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move until the camera is like parallel uh, with uh, this wall here, this uh, little fence here. And I'm just going to move this so that the cube it's just sort of nicely tucked in there, uh, and that way I can see um, see the corner here, um, how that's interacting with the uh, with the background environment, and uh, also sort of see how that cube is going to look as we move uh, back away from this scene and go further into it. And you can see that the back edge of this cube is fairly close to flush with the back corner of this here. Uh, so with that cube added, uh, I'm just going to uh, hit play, and we can just see that that cube is sort of sticking in that scene, and it does look like it uh, it could be part of this um, of this scene. And if we go right the way back, 
I can see that the the movement of that cube is 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 pretty much spot on with this um, uh, with the background that it's uh, that it's attached to. Uh, so with that done, um, all that we need to do now, and I'm just going to save. All that we need to do now is uh, export this out so Maya can read it. So I'm just going to hit the export button there, and uh, I've got the auto uh, tracking that I saved before. I'm just going to um, save this one as manual. Now um, the uh, things that I can select, I can export the camera, the 3D points and the distortion grid. Uh, I'm not sure what the distortion grid is. I think that's something to do with um, being able to tell Maya or tell the camera in Maya that um, or what the focal length is and, and to make sure that the perspective uh, follows that correctly. Uh, so I, I'm just going to leave those on. Uh, all tracks that match hard tracks and soft tracks. You can see that um, all of our tracks are in fact hard tracks. Uh, there are no soft tracks. We could deselect that if we wanted to, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the, uh, the track uh, quality, we've got good, fair and bad. Now, um, if you're using um, automatic, it's probably a good idea to switch off bad and just go with good and fair. Um, we've uh, basically only got good tracks. Uh, we might have some that qualify as fair, but uh, no, actually, because they're all green lights along here, so they're all good tracks. So uh, it doesn't really matter what we what we check there. Now animate. Uh, we can animate camera or we can animate the scene. Now I want this scene, these background points, to be completely stationary. I want the camera to be the thing that is moving in and flying in through the scene and the scene itself, the background scene, to be completely stationary. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure that camera is selected. Uh, first frame index is uh, what the frame will be on the, uh, the playback. Uh, and I'm happy to leave that at one and points scale, uh, which is the uh, the size of the grid uh, compared to what we have. Uh, I'm happy to leave that at at one at the moment, um, which means that it will be one for one. One centimeter will be one centimeter. So with that done, I'm just going to save that. And there we go. We got some refresh. Um, errors there, but that's alright. Uh, and so now, um, all we need to do is uh, go into Maya and see how it looks. Okay, so here we are in Maya now, and this is Maya 2011. Uh, now, I'm one of those people that um, thought Maya 8.5 was pretty cool, and uh, thinks that everything after that has been um, designed uh, with little changes uh, which are just to frustrate people like me, but uh, <laughs> uh, it does have a lot more, um, a lot more gadgets and a lot more fun toys in it. Uh, so uh, 2011 is the standard that we have to work with now. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to files and I'll open up the automatic tracking that we did before. Uh, you'll notice that we get a warning here that says this file is from an older version of Maya. Uh, do not worry about this warning. Uh, when MatchMover saved out the file or exported the file, it exported it as um, a fairly old file version. So if you are working in an older version of Maya, um, uh, if you prefer it or if uh, that's the, uh, the version that you have at home and you used MatchMover perhaps at a university or at your place of employment, uh, then you can sort of open up these files. Uh, that's all that warning means, so you can pretty much ignore that. Uh, now, this is the scene that we saved out from the automatic tracking. And uh, what an ungodly mess we have here. Uh, you can see that we have all of these locators in the scene. Uh, we can sort of see um, the rough fuzzy fog of the um, the uh, environment that we were filming in. You can see that perhaps this is the, uh, the that left wall with the doors and windows. Uh, this is the floor with the with the tiles on it. Um, but again we uh, we also have these uh, these things behind the camera which um, 
which don't seem to make any sense that uh, that the computer would believe that um, things which are on the camera would actually be referring to things behind the camera. But I guess that's just where the math told uh, match mover those points uh, have to exist in. Uh, so this is um, this is our scene. Uh, now you'll notice that uh, there's uh, the camera that we uh, that we created as part of the um, uh, as part of this scene, and it's our, our RZ or RZ camera one, and that's just the name that it gives to um, uh, the first camera that it creates in Match Mover. Now you'll notice that um, the actual coordinates of this. Um, uh, this scene are laid out as I sort of uh, told you in the um, in the lesson on coordinates and relation that um, uh, left and right up and down and um, the z-axis or uh, into the distance are all in relation to that first frame of, uh, of footage uh, so you'll see that the camera at frame 1 is pointing straight down the z-axis which means that our scene is actually um, uh, uh, scooping up and off to the the right um, uh, here, uh, or if you want to look at it another way, um, our camera is uh, pointing uh, down and to the left in our scene, uh, or our coordinates are also pointing down and to the left. Uh, so where is our backing plate? Where is the uh, where is the image that we uh, that we have to work on with the reference? Well. Um, I've noticed that when we do this automatic tracking, we are usually left with a scene that doesn't have um, a visible backing plate. And if I uh, tap five, you notice that it isn't a uh, it isn't an issue with um, the uh, the draw mode of the uh, of the viewport. Um, I have noticed that if I press the left square bracket to go back um, uh, to do a viewport undo, that the um, uh, the background or the backing plate does appear for that uh, that movement there, which means that it is trying to work it out. Uh, I think there's just so much information with these locators um, that it uh, just hides that to conserve that um, uh, that memory. So uh, if we want to look through our camera, we can just go down to perspective, and instead of the per the persp or the perspective camera, we can come down to our Z camera one and we can see our backing plate now. And if we uh, click play, you can see that we are walking through this scene. And these locators are, for the most part, sort of um, following the movement that we have on screen. But um, you will notice that there are all of these locators which are in the middle here, which don't really correspond to any points that, that it could possibly be. But uh, with all of these um, uh, if we cut down on some of these points, I'm, I'm sure that perhaps we would be following this scene to a certain extent. Uh, so we'll um, uh, uh, there there is something to be said for automatic tracking. It's just that it's not my preference. So let's have a look at manual tracking and how that looks. I'll just come down to this and open up manual. No need to save. And uh, because I had RZ camera. Oh, RZ camera selected in the last um, uh, last scene open. It's still selected here. Uh, now this uh, would be our point four, and it is uh, labelled um, track 04, um, and this is uh, what corresponds to the origin point as we set it up in the coordinate system. Now, if we zoom back, you can see that it's it's a fairly spaced out uh, scene. That's because uh, we set up uh, one um, one sort of unit to be uh, one centimeter, so that's why this is this is like this. But if we sort of move around, uh, we can see that our scene is visible um, right from the start. And if we go to our camera and hit play, and uh, doesn't look like we can actually uh, select those. Uh, we can actually see those points, but if we um, go here, we can see that these points are lined up perfectly well. So in the next lesson, uh, I'm going to be going through this, and uh, we'll uh, see if we can set up some sort of scene.